Hello and welcome to my Model Corner Project 26. In this latest model building video, we'll be working on the F-111 fighter bomber that was manufactured by General Dynamics in the United States. Our goal will be to fabricate the variant flown by our friends from the country and continent of Australia. And we'll deck it out in their preferred style of exterior painting and markings. Sometimes model building goes smoothly, other times there can be struggles. A part may drop off. You look around and think, Where is it? But then you find it. No, don't eat it. You may get frustrated. But take a snack break or something. Good Lord. And then come back to it. How long do you think it will take you until you get the situation under control? Well, that's pretty hard to say. Let's do a quick box opening view before looking in more detail at the particulars. Hobby Boss has produced another plastic model kit replete with many detailed pieces. You can certainly go bonkers with all the diorama possibilities such as phase maintenance in a hangar or some routine troubleshooting out on the flight line, all the way down to just a standard display configuration. As some of my regular viewers are aware, I have a quirky approach in that I sometimes put Easter eggs within my builds such as writing down a date on a part that I'm working on at the time, as well as completing detail to some parts that will be installed in the interior but will never be seen. Perhaps subconsciously, it provides additional meaning to the build for myself. We'll start with the traditional beginning step of constructing and detailing our cockpit. Unlike previous builds, the F-111 has the unique feature of an ejection cockpit capsule rather than the separate ejection seats for the crew. There are some errors in the moldings and parts designated for installation based on the images of the actual F-111C as well as a few mistakes in the instructions that I will point out as they come along. Let's detail up the cockpit instrument panels by carefully scraping away our starting dark layer of paint to reveal our switches, knobs, and other fine points.
The F-111 never seemed to get the attention that other military aircraft have received in the past, and my only distinct memory of it was its lead role it took in the bombing of Libya with the loss of one crew. For our next block, we can concentrate on those pieces requiring a coat of white. Here are some of those fun treasures to be hidden. Some minor painting and detailing of the engines, radar, and avionics was performed for some enjoyment, but not intended for viewing. This circular panel on the model is an inaccurate feature for our version of the F-111, so fill it in with some putty and then blend it in to the fuselage nose. Another artifact not present on the actual aircraft are these lighting strips. We'll have to remove them, so I protected the surrounding detail with some tape. There are a total of 8 of these segments that need to be deleted from around the model. In go the engines with all that nice detail facing down of all things. The wings are attached to two pins making them fixed in one position. If you want to be able to swing them or have them set at another angle, you'll have to do some modifications.
Although not explicitly identified as an option, you can manipulate these pieces to have the air refill door open or closed. I chose open for display purposes. There is some overlap of the wing root into the main fuselage which should be painted dark to hide the plastic model color should the model be viewed through the hairline space between the two. In go all our racks and avionics boxes never to be seen again unless this jet gets dropped or something. says to install two of the H3 parts to the ends of these fairings. It should be H2 on the left and H3 on the right. Let's button up our model with overspray protection and bring in the rain. After enlarging our paint guide sheet, we can fit the actual model pieces to the copies to double check the alignment and accuracy of our calculations. It looks great. We can now cut out our paper templates for airbrushing in the camouflage patterns. For our first camo, I chose this tan color straight out of the bottle, only having diluted it for airbrush use.
Following the identical process, we set up for the application of our second exterior color. Finally, we add our third camouflage color. While all that cures, let's work on those canopy frames and while we're at it, the nose radome. For the engine nozzles, we add our main paint. Next, we apply a heavy oil wash. And then wick in some panel liner to bring out those slots. Next, I lighten the inner nozzle with some paint and then scuffed up the parts to give it some more of a used look and also bring out some of the molded detail. Our next parts inaccuracy is that piece H6 should be used instead of H7 on the titanium tail based on real aircraft photos. Also referencing those images, there is a kind of sloppy orange sealant visible about the titanium, which can be created from red and yellow paint mixed together. Now we can mask off our red interior portions and you might notice that I'm using flat colors. The plan is to rely on the clear coats to bring out the proper semi-gloss look later on.
One of the main gear doors has this kind of cross pattern painted on the inner side that we need to replicate. I just hand painted in the subdivisions and will subsequently have the panel wash bring out the lines. To protect all our paintwork, two gloss coats were applied to the aircraft model about 30 to 60 minutes apart. To keep the jet relatively clean, I applied the black pastel powder and water mix to slightly darken the painted exterior and highlight the rivets, screw heads, and panel lines, which will all in turn remove the monochrome nature of the paint layers. A former F-16 avionics colleague of mine became a reservist, and his civilian job was to do all the heavy maintenance sea checks for commercial aircraft that flew in from all around the world. I still remember him reveling on how well the Australians took care of their aircraft, particularly Qantas. He said those jets were immaculate and well maintained. Anyway, while all this dries, let's concurrently work on the externals. There are quite a few options in this regard. I chose a relatively simple loadout of Mark 82 bombs and two external fuel tanks. Let's apply our decals before continuing construction while we can still move our model around easily, thereby reducing the risk of breaking off or damaging something. We'll begin with the flag of Australia on the vertical fin. The tail number supplied for the kit is Alpha 8, 1, 2, 7. Just a few more clips of the decal application. This set was durable and I only had a couple of breaks in those scary long walkway lines. However, it was straightforward to line the pieces up together to make those cuts invisible.
We can add silver or white paint as base color for our exterior lighting lenses to make the glass appear more brilliant when they are attached. Afterwards, we affix the engine nozzles, titanium shield, and then those clear lighting covers. Even though the interesting paintwork is on top of these trailing edge flaps, it's easier to install them while the jet is on its back. Now for the main landing gear with the fine kit feature of supplied rubber tires. Then our main gear doors, aft. Then the forward door with that cross design. And the six pylons. At this point, I fine-tune the black underside painting where it meets up with the upper camo colors along the forward fuselage. The central bay doors go on next, which you should note are numbered incorrectly in the instructions. The left and right side part numbers are swapped. Also, the blueprints call for the installation of air data probes on both sides of the nose. These do not exist here on the F-111C and should be omitted. On to the loading of our externals, the fuel tanks, then the bombs already attached to their respective racks. Let's carefully roll out 180 degrees. Many items can already be easily broken off. It's like treading in a minefield at this point. Time to add the leading edge flaps, the shoulder flaps, pitched up horizontal stabilizers, and the spoiler flaps. Two of my previous Hobby Boss kits ended up being tail heavy with no warning from the manufacturer. I purposely left the nose open to be able to add counterweight in the nose radome or space between the avionics. You gotta get the center of gravity just right. Not too far forward and not too far back. The moment of truth. The vertical tail is added and I discover based on the configuration I have chosen that we have a balanced model and do not need any forward ballast. Let's open up our cockpit and also install our radar dish and equipment and say goodbye as it goes into the nose cone and then onto the jet. After adding a couple of antennas, we add our final coat with an airbrush to even out the overall look of the exterior with a custom semi-gloss mixture. We're nearing the completion of this build and about ready to put our F-111C pig out on display. We only need to white glue in our canopy glass to finish everything up. I hope you enjoyed this latest production and found it entertaining and maybe instructive. Take care, and we'll see you later. This is Dundee 27. We have a target bearing 35 degrees. Do you copy drone pilot Australia 1A? Roger, tally hunt.